Dude, can you even fake get mad at that? I, I, I tried, I can't. Yeah, like, come on, it was a good effort. The Marlies were really resilient. Hi! Victory puppy! I have no idea what I'm doing. God, you're the of the league! This team is ruining my life! Are you here? Leafs tie the Montreal Canadiens 5-5, and then they did that thing that I refuse to acknowledge. Habs won the game, I hate the shootout. Let's start with this. Montreal Canadiens fans, if I were you. Okay, a lot of Leaf fans hate this about me. I, I don't hate the Habs. Listen, growing up, I hated the Ottawa Senators, obviously, the Battle of Ontario, the Philadelphia Flyers, the New Jersey Devils, the Buffalo Sabres, even the Carolina Hurricanes more than the Montreal Canadiens. I know there's the rivalry and everything, and it goes back through the ages, but when you don't have a playoff series against each other, it, it just doesn't happen. So growing up, Leafs-Habs games were always very exciting. I loved them. They were a lot of fun. The hate's just not there. So allow me to be nice to you for a sec. I've been seeing a lot of very upset Montreal Canadiens fans over the past week, over the past few weeks. This season's edition of the Montreal Canadiens reminds me a lot of the 16-17 Leafs. This young team with all this hope and no expectations heading into the season. None. And then late in the season, there was this interesting little thing where the Leafs may or may not make it. It was extremely tight. And people asked, hey, listen, nothing was expected of this Leafs team. If if they end up missing the playoffs by a point or two, is it really a disappointment? And they ended up making it, but I remember what my answer was. They had it. They were there. They were in a playoff spot. So if they don't make the playoffs, it will be because they lost it. It's a bit different when you go on a heater and, oh, you just, oh, almost catch it, but not quite. The Habs had it. They lost it. I get the frustration. Let me just turn the knife a little bit. No, but really, this season, the way the Habs performed... Win-win. You couldn't lose. Over the past week or so, I've been thinking, like, who truly had the worst season in the NHL? And it's not nearly as simple as who finished last. The Sens had tons of controversies, and they finished last, they lost a lot of games, but ultimately... Their young players played well, didn't they? Detroit didn't have a very good record, but their young guys were their best, and they were in a lot of games. I look at a team like the Sabres, and outside of Rasmus Dahlin, Dude, they still stink. What happened? With the Montreal Canadiens, priority number one, is Carey Price okay? You found out this season, yes he is. The Max Domi trade, holy cow. And how about Ryan Paling's first game? Listen, there's a few things that need to be figured out. Where did Jonathan Drouin go down the stretch? How do you get Victor Mete a goal? But ultimately, they almost made it. They were super competitive. They made it very interesting. And now they get to go into the draft lottery with a shot. Worst case scenario, they don't win any of the draft lotteries. They still get a decent pick. Habs fans, if I were you, after the sting went away, I would not look at this season as a failure. Not even close. That's why I would feel if I were you. Now, Leaf fans, I'm back to you. I'm sorry. I gotta go through this game quickly, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about the essence of the game, because, dude, it did not matter. This team sat Ron Hainsey, Nikita Zaitsev, Travis Dermott, and Jake Muzzin. Pretty sure the only defenders the Leafs had from their opening night lineup were Morgan Riley, Jake Gardner, and I think Igor Ojeganov? Dude, Martin Marincin played just shy of 22 minutes. They didn't take this game very seriously. Now, strictly cheering for the Leafs heading into the playoffs, I was hoping the Habs would be eliminated before this game. Because there's no reason for them to, like, go over the top and try and bang and crash and injure guys. Because neither team had anything to play for for different reasons, get a load of this. The last regular season NHL game where both teams had at least 49 shots was 1976. Leafs versus Colorado. Colorado Rockies! Shinny! We watched Shinny! The game was decided in a shootout! Shinny! We watched a Shinny game! It's basically stick and puck. They should have played overtime with just helmets, gloves, and skates. You got Charlie Lindgren in net for the Habs. You got Freddie Anderson in net for the Leafs, but the decor is like this rickety cardboard box you've been using as a coffee table, and it's and it's just, you can't anymore. You gotta go to Ikea. Less than six minutes in, Zach Hyman throws it in off of Shea Weber. one nothing. Mitch Marner does a good job of stopping up, gets the puck to Jake Gardner at the point and he throws a dart on, and it beats Charlie Lindgren. He scores. Like, this is the sort of thing I'm talking about heading into the playoffs. No, it wasn't a very good game. No, they weren't taking it seriously. But... Jake Gardner played over 26 minutes and scored a goal. All I care about heading into the playoffs are the players who are actually going to play all right. When Zach Hyman got hit in the head with the puck, I'm like, no, 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 no. When Freddie Anderson got run, I was like, no, 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 no. 
They both seem to be fine, and in the event they are not fine, they have until Thursday to get fine. Or finer. It's a word. It's a playoff word. Fine in the playoffs is defined by has a heartbeat. So it looks like the Leafs are going to run away with it. No! No 2 nothing lead is ever safe in shinny. Jordan Wheel throws it in front and crashing to the net in his first NHL game. Ryan Paling puts it in. It is two. Babs, you're not. BABS! So they actually, honestly, seriously challenged that for goalie interference. Mike, if it's Brendan Gallagher, Max Domi, Andrew Shaw, I don't care. It's the kid's first goal, Mike! The game means nothing! Watching the replay, it actually wasn't a bad challenge, but... Mike! And by the way, this is how dumb the rule is. I think it was a good challenge and also that it should have been a goal. If you're Mike Babcock, you've seen what you've seen. You've seen what's been called back against the Leafs. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that maybe. But for how meaningless the game was in his first goal, Michael. So that's his first of his career and they head into the intermission up to one. And it's funny, it's Bob Cole's final game and I'm watching going, ah, oh, someone got their first goal in Bob Cole's last game. Isn't that beautiful? Ha, ha, continue. Early in the second, Habs have the puck along the half wall, they work it to the point, and again, what have I been saying? They don't have him covered, do they? Jeff Petrie is able to blast one on net, that hits the post, Ryan Palin gets the easiest goal of his career uh, so far, he's got two and it's a tie game 2-2. Leafs take a penalty, Montreal gets a power play, which was confusing to me because I thought in Shinny you got a penalty shot. Jordan Wheel buries, Habs take the lead. Bye-bye, 2 nothing lead. But it's okay because very shortly after, Freddie Goche with a nice little stick lift. What, what are you doing playing hockey there, Freddie? Trevor Moore takes it, streaks in, ping! His second of the season makes it 3-3. Ah, the fourth line's out there trying. They, they want to impress. It's hilarious. This game featured like six players who were trying their hardest, and they all did well. Andrew Shaw gets his 19th of the season, and he stayed at 19, and I'm like, good. William Nylander, wrap around. Okay, who allows a rapper? This is shitty. It's Willie. It's Willie. He needs one. Give it to him. And we head to the third period at Del Park Home Center, whatever. It used to be called Legends, right? Oh, it's the Bell Center. Oshawa humor. Midway through the third, Leafs are whacking away in front. Kasperi Kapanen has a wide open net. Scores! He did it! 20! 20! The Leafs get their 7th 20 goal score. Remember a few years ago, just 2015-16, the year they were tanking, the year that brought them Austin Matthews? They had one 20 goal score. One. Habs fans, you might get a kick out of this. It was P.A. Parento. I'm pretty sure he scored the 20th in his last game of the season, too. It's amazing. It's a testament to how good the Leafs' offense is because they had 720 goal scores. Nazem Kadri wasn't one of them. They got some, uh, weapons, but goal scoring hasn't exactly been the problem, has it? One thing... Ooh. Ooh, I cannot wait for playoff Cappy. We've seen enough of Kasperi Kapanen in the playoffs that we know it's a treat. And his expectations for himself, especially with that heater he was on earlier in the season, are sky high. He thinks he should have broken Gretzky's record this season. The look on his face after he scored! Ah, oh, damn it, Phil, that was Phil. I did not rehearse that, that hurt. But like, when I was a kid, I would watch Leafs games and I would learn swear words by reading Pat Burns. Lips. I think for this generation of Leaf fans, they're learning from a Finn. They're learning from Kasperi Kapanen. Because how many times has he almost scored and we've seen the camera go to him and he's just like, Oh, heck gosh darn, I'm flummoxed! And it's like, whoa, gotta wash out your mouth with soap, kid! Cappy's got a temper. He's a gamer though, and it's gamer time in the playoffs. And so the Leafs win Bob Cole's final game. Odd ah, nuts. Oh, Oh god, I'm getting misty though. It's two and a half minutes to go, the Habs come in, and Ryan Paling streaking again, snipes on Freddie Anderson for the hat trick, the hats rain down. Bob Cole's call is beautiful. Goal goes in, the Habs start celebrating, the horn goes off, and Bob Cole has still not said scored yet. Then he goes, scores! And the hats rain down, and he's talking about how Ryan Paling scored his first hat trick in his first game which is Bob Cole's last. And Bob is laughing through it because he understands how cool that is, how ironic it is, and oh my god. Ryan Paling forces overtime, a bunch of really good opportunities in overtime. Holy smokes, did Morgan Riley come to play. And with less than a minute to go, Max Domi is coming down on the Leafs, and I'm like, you know what? I would rather him score now than for Bob Cole's last call to be in the shootout. But no, we go to the shootout. What a way to 
go. But sure enough, Bob Cole lived up to the moment, and of course, it was paling. Saw a lot of Leaf fans salty. D dude, the Mitch Marner attempt, I will fully admit, I had no idea what happened. Saw a lot of people going, that was in! And saw other people sending screenshots of the puck allegedly in. It's not even the puck, guys. Flintor, for a person who's been around for a little while now, is having a breakout season, and they posted a GIF. It didn't go in. It didn't come close to being it. Well, I guess it came close, but it didn't go in. It went off of Lindgren's leg pad, up, and landed under his chest. That's why, remember when you saw it in the crease and you were like, oh, he pulled it out? No, he didn't. And the Montreal Canadiens win their final game of the season. Leafs. Who cares? They've been thinking about Boston for a month. Listen, considering it was a meaningless game, I am happy that the coolest possible story happened for Bob Cole. Someone's first NHL game is Bob Cole's last, and he scores a hat trick in the shootout winner in it. Come on. I like to propose a toast, I know it's with coffee, to Bob Cole. Thanks for making the sport that we love even better. Ah, Bob Cole Leaf Bruins would have been so cool! Ah, well, you know what? He's been broadcasting for 50 years. He's 85 years old. Just after the draft in June, he's gonna be 86. I think he's earned a bit of a rest. So Bob Cole is the old. The new, I think, you know, could be younger people in broadcasting. It could be YouTubers. Coach Jeremy from How To Hockey has been going to a lot of games recently and the Leafs have been losing all of them. No more Leafs games for me. That's it, I'm done. And he was kind enough to send me this footage, but it's a trap. Jeremy, stop going to the game. You're not allowed to go to the playoffs, Jeremy. You're not allowed to go to the playoffs. The games matter now, Jeremy, you're not allowed. Questions, simple one. Series prediction? Yeah. Leafs in six. I don't know why. I really don't. I don't have a good explanation other than, doesn't this year feel dumb? Forget the Bruins, this is even worse news for Tampa, but something about this season just feels like it's not gonna go the way it's supposed to go. It's so weird. If you're the Leafs, how do you prepare for the Bruins because your decor, as you've designed it, has basically never played together? And if you're the Bruins, how do you prepare for the Leafs? because their decor, as they designed it, has essentially not played together. I have no idea what to expect. No idea at all. Should be fun. Listen, the Bruins barely beat the Leafs last year, and their top line was like breaking records. If the Leafs can do a somewhat okay job of shutting them down, not get outscored 7-1 by the one line every game, they have a fighting shot. Why not? Is you in? Yes, I is. <laughs> Just how bad will the refing be? Listen, the playoffs are the playoffs. It'll basically be up to the Leafs to not take penalties, not take retaliatory penalties, not, I could see in game one, them letting things get out of hand, take stick infractions, keep it cool. Keep it cool. Because dude, the Leafs finished this season, this 82 game regular season, with the fewest power play opportunities in the entire league. They're still a top 10 team. Do you believe that? Most of hockey is played at five on five. The Leafs are a decent team at 5-on-5. Five five. In the playoffs, power play opportunities go down. Should be the Leafs' advantage, shouldn't it? Oh my god, I already answered this, but that's insane! Before we head into the playoffs, I've got one last question for you. Are you in? Dude, I'm like an anime guy, that's crazy! That is the most intimidating Iggy and Charlie have ever looked. They, they uh, come on. They got groomed yesterday. There's literally just two pieces of fluff walking through the house right now. Gotta end on that note. You know what? I'll cut it off here because I'm gonna do a playoff preview at some point. It makes no sense to rush through this. But listen, no matter how positively or negatively you view the Leafs right now, no matter how high or low you are on this team, are you in? Strip everything you know away. Think about the Washington Capitals last year and stop thinking about all the reasons that they won because your brain is biased because it knows the Capitals won. They were down two games to nothing in the first round. They needed overtime to win game three. They pulled it off. They faced their dragon in the Pittsburgh Penguins and beat them in the second round. They were down three games to two to Tampa Shut out, shut out in game six and seven to move on to the Stanley Cup final when no one wanted them to win because even though it was going to be their first cup, the better story is Vegas. The Washington Capitals did not win the Stanley Cup until they weren't supposed to. So let me ask you, are you in? I don't care what you write down or answer aloud, the answer is yes. Otherwise, 
while you watch it. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you want to watch some playoff videos. Tell all your friends. It's about to get a little hairy in here. The real season begins Thursday.